really quickly here. Um, let me get into the software and let's get this show on the road. So the whole object of this uh, is to learn how to um, use Atrium to send an email on different uh, events in the system. So before we can uh, choose which events, uh, we have to indicate to the system what is the uh, email account that the Atrium is going to be using to send off those emails. So um, in the this is done in the software. It's one of the advanced features of the system. So in the hardware tab, system overview, you'll see your controllers. Uh, so for the controllers, what you need to do is it's in the controller menu that you'll set up the uh, SMTP settings for the email account that you're going to be using. Uh, you could use any email account, create yourself a Gmail account, uh, use your corporate account, and so on and so forth. So to enter that information, um, we'll go into the controllers menu. And in the email settings tab is where, you're, where you'll be entering the information. So uh, let's say at email.com, for example. So this is the email account that uh, we're using. The SMTP uh, often is uh, SMTP uh, dot my email dot com, for example. If you're going to be using Gmail, uh, to my knowledge, and unless they've changed this, the SMTP settings for Gmail is smtp.gmail.com. Okay. Now, the SMTP port, that all depends on your email provider. Uh, very often you'll see 465 or 487 um, for a um, port settings. If you're not familiar with the port settings and the email settings, you can always Google, especially if you're using Gmails or uh, what is it, uh, Windows Mail or stuff like that, uh, the, the online email systems. Uh, simply Google it and you'll get the information and they'll probably, they'll certainly provide not only the SMTP server information, but also the port information. Um, then you'll provide to for Atrium what is the a login information for that email account, and is this uh, email account a what encryption method does it use? Uh, most probably you'll probably have SSL TLS, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think the Start TLS option is an older option, so I think that's a bit passe. However, uh, what I suggest worst case scenario. Try it with one. If it doesn't work, go to the other one. So you only have two choices here. So it isn't that difficult to troubleshoot if there is any issues. So in the controller menu, in the email settings tab, you enter your email account information. Once you've got that information, uh, well, let's see here, I'll just put in some, uh, some information to complete the process and enter a password and then we can save so you need to put all the information now before i go into actually uh using which events there's uh something that i want to put forward here you can either have as you see here in my system i have a master controller and one subcontroller, and there's two schools of thought here you neither one has its own advantages and disadvantages do i want the master controller to be the one to send emails for my entire system uh, it's easier. You only have one um, one controller where you'll program your emails. Or do I prefer to maybe separate the uh, the load, if you will, uh, so on a controller per controller basis? So I've set up the email account for my master, and if I decide that I prefer, if ever the master is offline and I have a subcontroller and there's an incident going on at the sub subcontroller level and it is on the network, it's just the master is, you know, has an issue. Um, all by all means, you can have each controller, whether it's the master or any subcontroller, fire off their own emails. So just enter the same email account information for your controllers. So is it a, uh, if you will, have the master generate all the emails and take care of any subcontrollers, or do you prefer to uh, separate the the task, the workload, if you will, and have each controller do its own emails? Uh, so either way. Whatever the case may be, the number of emails that each controller, if you're going to go controller per controller, uh, is 100 emails. 
So 100 different conditions that we can choose and pick according to our particular site requirements and the job at hand. Uh, so you can have up to 100 emails. So I'm on my master controller emails, and then I'm going to go to add an email. And we could have in that list when I'm finally done up to 100 different emails in the list. So let's uh, start this off. So for uh, incident management, for example, certain incidents, incidents can happen in the system. And one of them, if you're monitoring your doors with door contacts, if ever the door has been forced open, there's a burglary attempt or whatever the case may be, uh, we're going to use that as a trigger to uh, fire off an email. So you simply name your, um, your email uh, that you're configuring. The schedule here, uh, I, I'd probably say most of the time, you're going to probably choose the schedule always. Whatever schedule you do choose in here, in this field here, if the conditions that I'm working out and what I'm done and I save, if that particular condition becomes true and the schedule is valid, Atrium will send an email. If the condition becomes true and the schedule is invalid, so if I choose from 8 to 5 here, 8 to 700, uh, 1700, and whatever in trigger event I choose and the event happens at 9 o'clock at night, the system will not send an email because the schedule is not valid. So this is where you can pick and choose accordingly. Maybe you want to say uh, only overnight and on the weekends, if something happens, I want to send an email. During the daytime, these kind of situations will probably arise. I don't really need to know. So maybe you could create yourself a schedule, an overnight schedule, and use that. So the schedule field, uh, important as if the schedule is valid, whatever I've configured, then the uh, email will be sent out. If the schedule is not valid at the time, the email will not be sent out. So the trigger events I mentioned, and I'm working with the idea of door forced. So the type of events, and there are multiple uh, different types of events. In this particular case, we're dealing with doors. So I'll go down the list. And here we go. We have the doors option and the door events that can be generated by the system. As you see, there are several events that are door related. Okay. So. The one that I'm considering right now is door forced. And here, uh, since uh, depending on which selection you make in the type and event, the event detail field will become active if it's uh, pertinent or not. In this particular case, it's not, so it's deactivated. Now over here, the doors, uh, door forced, which door do you want to have the system send an email? You can prioritize per door if you wish. Uh, so in the list here. so just to give you a better grasp of what we're seeing in this list here, it's the list of the doors that I have on my system. So I have four, four doors, two controllers, each one with two doors, of course. So on the serial number in the parentheses here, you see the serial number of the panel, and you'll find that over here. Now we have a group for that serial number. We also have a group for the other one. So just keep your eye out here, we have 080, and over here we have 08. So very similar, but not the same. So if I choose 008, so I'm saying the master controller, when I choose group, allows me to choose a range. Now, of course, if I have 10 doors, well, I'll be able to choose from, let's say, door three to door eight, if you wish. And depending on your different options, whatever is more uh, pertinent to you. So a group of doors from door one until the door that I choose on that same controller, since I only have two doors, so that's why it's one and two. Uh, however, if you have multiple doors, you'll be able to choose. And this is a range. Uh, if you want, I think another option individually would be uh, the door per door. Okay, so if it's door one, here's a door forced, uh, send an email. If it's, I could create a second email and say, if it's door two, if it's door forced, send an email. Or I could say per controller, any door on that door. So instead of a range, it's any door on that particular controller. In this case here, this is my one of my subcontrollers, my subcontroller. So any door on that one. Uh, is it any door on the master controller? 080 is the serial number, so any door. So door per door, a range of doors, that's our group option here for each controller, or the any door option for either controller. And then you simply 
send the email to the address. Uh, security guard at building.com. I'm being very creative here today. <laughs> uh, service company, uh, what, you're, what I'm doing here at gmail.com uh, and a blind courtesy copy, so administrator at, at building.com, for example. So these three fields, the two, the courtesy copy and the blind courtesy copy, Atrium uh, will accommodate one email address per field. So if I've used, if you're familiar with email uh, Outlook, for example, I think many people are familiar with that. If I use the uh, the uh, colon sign, the semicolon sign, and then add a second address at uh, whatever the case may be, uh, the second email address that's on the in this field will not receive an email. So it's one email address per field to be able to send that. Now the subject, you can personalize the subject. Uh, I follow your thought process. Uh, and you can have a uh, personalized message uh, up to 65 characters long. What I might suggest is a telephone number, emergency contact information, uh, the service company, uh, whatever you want to uh, add to the generic text that will come in the email. And what is that generic text? So in the case of door force, whenever I receive an email on any of these doors on that particular controller, uh, if they're forced, I would see, receive an email indicating what time the email, uh, the uh, event happened, which door it was. So you get the actual event text of the system. And in addition, you can add a little short message to be able to uh, personalize that event if you wish. Okay, so incident management, um, Access, uh, for example, a request that uh, some people have, uh, just moving forward here, uh, access denied incident. So my concept here is the customer, the site has asked me if we, we're getting a lot of people, if I can type this right. We're getting people trying to enter the building that have not paid their rent and so on and so forth and that kind of stuff. So. Whenever we, uh, we, we see an access denied that someone's trying to get into the building, uh, they're not supposed to be trying to get in at this point in time, um, we want to be flagged about this. So the access denied, um, this would be, if I'm not mistaken, let's go see the areas. So we grant, grant access or deny access to different areas in the building. So in this particular case, we want to select denied and the event detail. Now over here we have a whole slew of different conditions where you might have an access denied generated by the system. If you leave the field blank, in this case, it would mean any of these events would be uh, used to generate the email. Or if you want to have a specific, it's the access event because you're doing double swipes and so on and so forth. So if you leave it blank, it's all, if not, you choose one at a time, okay? Uh, so access, I'm gonna leave it blank, any access denied condition and at which doors. And we find once again, what we saw earlier with the door force, since we're dealing with areas on these controllers, which area, uh, is it any area and so on and so forth. Now, once again, similar to the event detail, while I left it blank means all in the user option here, since it is a access type event, it's asking us which users. If I leave it blank, it means any user, all the users. Or if I want to pinpoint, there's this particular tenant that we're really concerned about. If he has a card, he hasn't returned it to us. We know who he is. And if he does try and come back here, we're really just, you just pick that particular user in your database and you will be able to complement uh, and have that system send off an email when he tries to enter the building. Uh, so incident management, uh, emergency response, um, for example, right now, the, um, the uh, topic of the day, if you will, uh, unfortunately, is lockdown. So uh, if I scroll down the menu here, emergency uh, reply, you know, in that case. So what I'm looking for now is a lockdown. So instead of access denied, lockdown uh, started, for example. Uh, once again, my schedule, uh, the event type is a lockdown event, and we have a few selections here. I think these might not be 
uh, to the point in our particular scenario today. But let's try this one here. And since this is a lockdown started, well, there's no event detail. And you click Save to have your lockdown. So for example, I'll just do that here. So if ever you are implementing lockdown and someone has initiated or started a lockdown, you'll be able to uh, re respond to that and be advised of it. Okay. Um, so we could have up to 100 emails in this system uh, per controller. Um, just finishing off here, for maintenance type situations, service contracts, if you're an integrator, uh, this is a wonderful way to uh, get uh, some RMR from your system. Um, monitoring the system. For example, if there's a uh, module communication failure, what if my subcontroller goes offline? So I'll select subcontrollers. What is the event? Module missing, it's offline. Which module, in our case here, I could either choose any or my particular module here and send off an email. All right. So at gmail.com and fill in the blanks here, your personalized message and save. Uh, we also have, as far as service contracts, uh, that type of idea, uh, batteries, uh, AC power. So here's battery. If we have a low battery on the system. Okay. Uh, AC power failure. So let's see, uh, primary power is this one here. So if ever some of my panels lose power, I want to be advised and I can turn this into an offering for a service. Uh, Maintenance contract, if ever the AC in your building fails, uh, the batteries will take over. The batteries typically will last a minimum of four hours. They are UL listed, so it's a minimum of four hours and typically uh, anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. So that would give you an indication that my batteries on my panels, on my system at this particular building are now uh, being used. And I have a four, uh, minimum four hour time window to get out to and service that site. So that covers, it's very simple, very straightforward. That covers the, the configuration. So hardware, system overview, the key points is on your controller. In your controller menu, set up your email configuration, your email account information, and you can do that per controller. And for each controller, you can have up to 100 emails. It's a matter of selecting what those controllers are. And the best, you know, like anything else, uh, uh, hopefully you have a, maybe a demo unit or if you have some spare equipment, uh, now's the time to be able to practice this kind of stuff. Uh, you'll have some, uh, hopefully, um, some moments to be able to uh, fiddle with this, uh, these different features, these advanced features, and uh, be able to uh, increase the productivity of your Atrium install. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, takes care of today's uh, webinar. Appreciate all your attendance and uh, come back soon. Check our uh, webinar page and our uh, online training there, and you'll find uh, all the webinars that we set up. We'll be doing more and more as time goes forward here. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.